Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your May monthly forecast. I am your astrologer, Maria De Simone, and I've got some really interesting news for you about the month of May, Scorpio, because we are having some celestial transitions that are going to start to affect you in new areas of your life. And you're going to want to understand what they are and really take advantage of this information. So before I get started on that, however, I do want to let you know that registration is now open for my next Beginner's Astrology Zoom class. All of my classes are personalized using your birth charts in the lesson plans and in the homework assignments. So it is a really unique experience. You will learn the foundations of astrology in a proper way. You will come away from this class starting to think astrologically for yourself. And in this class, you will gain an understanding of the basic structure of a birth chart, planets, signs, houses, the elements, the modes, and much more. So if you are interested in becoming one of my students and joining my astrology family, go to insightfulastrology.com, claim your spot now while the early bird registration rate is active because that will save you $50 off of your class. So let us talk about your seventh house. This is the last month, Scorpio, where your seventh house of partnership is going to be this pronounced and emphasized. Yes, Uranus will still be here, but Jupiter is going to leave. By the end of the month okay but before jupiter leaves something magical is happening it's kind of like the universe is sending off all this seventh house energy with a with a grand hurrah and that is because on may 7th we are getting a new moon in taurus and that new moon will land in your seventh house of partnership this new moon has a cluster of planets in your seventh house we've got the sun moon venus jupiter and uranus so half of the sky but what's more exciting about that is the fact that both of the benefic planets, Venus and Jupiter, are going to be in this part of your chart at the time of the new moon. And that does very strongly suggest that whatever new beginning is about to happen in a partnership matter for you, it is a positive one. Now, that new beginning could be about a personal relationship whether you are getting engaged or married or going into an exclusive connection with someone or maybe meeting someone and starting to seriously date them. But it doesn't have to be personal. This can absolutely be about business as well. Aligning yourself with a new business partner, increasing your client base. If you are someone who sees clients in a business, seventh house rules your clients. So there is this benefit that's happening now because of other people connected to your business life somehow, and you want to definitely take advantage of it. Now, on May 18th, Venus and Uranus meet up exactly in your seventh house, and that is a classic love at first sight, sudden love connection. So for those of you who are single, pay attention to what's happening around that time. You could be bumping into someone who changes your life instantly. This could also be sudden money connected to partnership matters or a client, big client that comes your way. And it does seem extra blessed because on the same day, we are having the once in a year Sun-Jupiter lucky conjunction. And that conjunction also falls in your seventh house. And you are not going to see a Sun-Jupiter conjunction in your seventh house for 12 more years. So there, there is a definite positive emphasis happening, Scorpio, in your seventh house in the month of May. Use it. Work with it. And then as we get to later on in the month, we have some changes. So on the 23rd, there is a full moon in Sagittarius, and that full moon does fall in your second house of earned income, your livelihood. And there could be a transition here. It does not have to be negative, but some of you will experience a loss of income, a loss of revenue. Others are just going to be really security conscious, and you're going to be triggered at this time, feeling less secure than you would like to about your current financial situation, but also gaining an awareness of what it is that you might need to change in order to improve things. But the big news occurs a couple days later on May 25th, when Jupiter, the planet of expansion, leaves your seventh house of partnership and moves into your eighth house of shared resources. I, for one, love eighth house money. And hopefully you do too, because eighth house money gives us a lot of opportunity. There's a big umbrella here for wealth because it doesn't rule money that you get from a direct paycheck. That's second house money. Eighth house money is literally everything else. 
money that you earn through royalties, commissions, bonus checks, uh, money that you get through passive income streams, through your investments, through an inheritance, through your spouse's income, through a partner's money, business partner's money, through financing from somebody else. This is also taxes and credit. Uh, this is loans. It is endless in terms of how you can gain money in eighth house ways or lose money, but with Jupiter here, you are now likely to be in a one-year cycle of gaining money. Many people get approved for mortgages, as one example, when Jupiter is in the eighth house. It, it's easier. People want to give you money, including banks. If you need to borrow money for some big project, this will be a great year to go ahead and apply for that loan. If you are married, you will notice that your partner's income increases somehow and you will benefit from that. And yes, some people do receive inheritances or gifts, financial gifts from other people during this time period. So it's a really exciting way for you to increase your money and you might do very well with investments. So pay attention to your retirement planning, for example, or your investment portfolio. This would be a good time to add some new new uh, uh, investment strategies to your portfolio and be optimistic about it because it does look favorable. All right, so that is what I have for you, Scorpio, for the month of May. Let me know in the comments how the month is turning out for you and how you're going to use this amazing energy, especially the shift of Jupiter leaving your seventh house of partnership and now going into your eighth house of shared resources. Have a great month. I will talk to you soon. Bye.